Now that I have the wing structure mostly built, it's time to install the fuel tanks and all the avionic sensors, like the magnetometer, the angle attack, pitot probe, and also the temperature sensor. After all the wing structure and internal bracing were installed, it was time to install the fuel tank. This was a lot more comprehensive and laborious than I first imagined, and drilling into that plastic tank was a little nerve-wracking. There were no do-overs. I had one shot to get it right. The feed line holes needed to be drilled on a curved portion of the tank where there wasn't any room to spare, so I had to measure very precisely and hope the big hole left enough room for that flat washer behind. Rand suggests using a step drill, which are handy tools, making perfectly round holes, but when using these with a hand drill, the center of the hole is never where you started. But I was ultimately successful, as a pressurized tank leak check did not reveal any leaks. Then before installing them in the wings, I thoroughly cleaned each tank and sealed it up quickly so as to not let any dust or debris work its way in as I jockey them into the wing bay. Mounting the tank into the wing involved a lengthy back and forth effort, shoehorning the tank into the bay, taking measurements, drilling or cutting something, then test fitting the tank in the bay again. Once the tank was finally fitting correctly, the upper wing skin was clean coated in place and the, and the rubber scupper was cut, glued, and then bolted in place. The leading edge sheet, along with the fuel tank cover skin, was maneuvered in place and held with clecos before riveting. The leading edge was then glued to the forward spar using structural adhesive. The long 2x4 is called for in the directions to ensure smooth pressure when clamping it to dry. And to avoid the glue sticking to the wood, I wrapped the 2x4 in wax paper, which worked very well as it just peeled off the glue. Finding a location for the AHARS magnetometer was a little tricky and took a lot of planning with the tape measure. As you can see from the install manual, the requirements to find a magnetically quiet area are pretty stringent. 10 feet from any motor, 8 feet from any ferromagnetic structure, and especially in a wing, 3 feet from any control cables. And as electrical wires produce magnetic fields when current is flowing, any power wires in the wing must be a twisted pair, and ideally shielded, as I needed to do that with the wing tip lights. But I finally found a location that mostly satisfied this requirement, mostly, as I couldn't get the full separation called for in the manual. Hopefully though, a thorough and complete calibration will take care of the rest. I hope so, as I'll be flying this thing in Alaska, where a good compass is just as important as a GPS antenna with a clear view of each horizon. The mounting plate and access cover are all mounted with non-magnetic stainless steel hardware. I routed the wires through a clear tube conduit secured to each rib. Inside is the shielded CAN bus wire, the twisted power and ground wires, and a couple lacing cords running the full length. Those cords are routed in the conduit if I need in the future to pull more wires through the conduit after the skin is in place. They don't add any weight and it's easy to add them now. Next was the pitot tube, which also provides angle of attack sensing with a second hole in the tube. This needed to be mounted very rigidly as any movement would affect the accuracy of angle of attack sensing, so it's a pretty beefy structure. My metal fabrication is a little crude here and not up to my usual standards, but I had to make the bends by hand as I don't have a finger break, although I'm thinking of getting a small one before I start making avionic shelves. As you can see here, there are three polyflow tubes. The combination pitot and angle of attack probe only uses two, but what happens after the fabric skin is on, after a few years one of the polyflow tubes springs a leak? I'd be screwed. So that's why I ran an extra tube through the structure just as a spare. It really doesn't take any additional effort and the weight is negligible. I just made sure there was plenty of length and that both ends were sealed against any dust. I secured the tubes and the magnetometer conduit to the ribs using these special tie wrap mounts designed just for that purpose running cables through beveled lightning holes. And finally, the last component to be mounted in the wing was the temperature probe for the air data system. I considered a few different locations for this, under the fuselage, in a fresh air vent, and under a wing, as these probes cannot be mounted where they would see the sun. So I ended up mounting it under the left inboard wing, away from any passenger entry, making sure it would clear the pilot's clamshell door when it's open. The shielded wire was also routed through a plastic tube conduit because it passed through the fuel tank bay and needed to be protected from any chafing. Once these major tasks were done, the shop benches were a mess. It was time to clean up.
There. Much, much better. Next time, I'll walk you through installing the wingtip lights and fabricating the harness. Oh,